All right, so today we're going to look at the integral test for series. Uh, this is coming from section 11.3 in our book. Uh, so we're going to start with a series. So imagine we've got a sum from n equals c to infinity of some term a n. Uh, so this is just a sum of an ordered collection of infinitely many numbers. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a function that is associated with the terms of our series. So whereas the terms of our series are of the form a n, our function is going to be of the form a sub x. So what this essentially means is uh, our function is going to look like so. So, so here's an example of above. Uh, we're, we're simply going to take the terms of our series. In this case, our series has terms of 3 over n squared, and we're going to replace the n in our terms with x. So the terms are of the form 3 over n squared. The function associated is of the form f of x equals 3 over x squared. Uh, and you might notice that this function looks a hell of a lot like a lot of the functions that we've seen in our course to this point. Uh, right, so when we get our function that pops out uh, as a result of taking the terms of our series, replacing n with x, uh, we have three things to check. Uh, but if these three things turn out to be uh, uh, all true about our function, then we can apply what is referred to as the integral test. So the three things we'll need to check are one, that the function is decreasing. Um, in other words, that means that the graph of the function is downhill. Uh, we also want to check to make sure that the function is positive, uh, positive in the sense that the graph lives above the x-axis, so the function takes positive values. And uh, the function also needs to be continuous. In other words, it needs to be free of holes, jumps, or vertical asymptotes. So uh, ultimately, we've, we, we need to have a decreasing downhill, positive, north of the x-axis, continuous, uh, no hole, no jump, no vertical asymptote graph. Uh, if that is the case, though, uh, what we can actually uh, do is use the integral to tell us something about the series. And that's to say that the series will converge exactly when the integral converges. Uh, so what this statement means when we say exactly when, uh, when our integral associated with the function with x plugged in converges, then our series will converge. And on the other hand, if our integral diverges, then the series will diverge. Uh, so what this, what the integral test is saying is that if the function associated with the terms of your series is decreasing, positive, and continuous, uh, then you can look at the integral associated with your function to determine if your series converges, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, so now, uh, justification of this fact, uh, so that we're not just sort of taking my word uh, at its word, uh, I've got a couple pictures here down below that will sort of um, supply some uh, some uh, logic for the, the, the facts that were stated above. So, okay, so let's start by looking at this uh, picture here on the right. So in the picture on the right, uh, let's, uh, well, I guess let's first notice the function that we've drawn here uh, as a graph. Uh, note, this function is decreasing. The function's going downhill. Also note the function appears to be north of the x-axis throughout, so the function is taking positive values. And also note that the function appears to be free of holes, jumps, and vertical asymptotes, at least on the interval of interest. So the interval of interest is from 1 to infinity, and uh, from 1 to infinity, uh, it appears there's no lack of continuity with this function. So uh, since this is an example of a function decreasing positive and continuous, uh, this is an example of a function that would apply to the integral test. Okay, so uh, we're, we are going to act under the assumption that the integral here diverges. So what does that mean? Uh, take the area that's sort of outlined in black here, uh, the area from 1 to infinity. Uh, it, this is the area under the function. Uh, uh, disregard those uh, bar graphs for a second. If you just look at the area under the function, the area under the function uh, is a divergent limit. Now we know that that means that the limit is either plus or minus infinity or doesn't exist. And looking at this picture, it is quite natural to, uh, to, to see that the, the divergence of this limit would be because the area under this function would be infinite. So in other words, when you look at the area of this black region under the function here to the right, we are going to assume that that area is infinite. So I tell you what, let me draw this in here. We have this area here. This area is infinite in value. Okay, sweet. So now, uh, the integral test claims that if you have a, a, a function decreasing positive continuous with a divergent integral, associated with the area, 
then you will subsequently have a divergent series. Now, why can we say that that is the case? Well, check this out. Now, this function was concocted precisely from the terms of our series, which means what our function evaluates to at one, for example, is what our series evaluates to at one. So the height of this uh, uh, function at f of one would be a sub one. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over one unit and draw myself a bar. Uh, now, this, this bar of my graph, this, this rectangle, is one unit wide and A1 units tall, so its area is A1. A1 is the area of this first bar of my bar graph. Uh, what about this second bar of my bar graph? Well, uh, it is as tall as the function is tall at 2, but f of 2 is just a sub 2. So this function is as tall as the second term in our series. Uh, I'm going to draw this bar to be one unit wide so that whenever we look at the area of this bar, uh, one unit wide, a2 units tall, uh, multiply a2 times 1, the area of that bar is a2. Similarly, the area of the subsequent bar is a3, a4, and so on. Now, note, each of these bars protrudes above the function. And why is that the case? Because our function is decreasing, when I draw my bar off to the right, the function is necessarily going to be lower than my bar, and so the bar is necessarily going to encompass more area than our function encompasses. And so we know that the area of the black region is infinite, and clearly then, the area of all of the bars must also be infinite. Think about this. The bars here extend above the function, so if we added up the area of all the bars, that would also be infinite as well in this case. Uh, well, more area than infinite area is certainly infinite as well. But now think about this. What is the, what is the sum of all of the areas of those bars? Uh, the sum of the areas of all of those bars would be the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of our ans. Uh, it's going to be the sum of the terms of our series. So what we've essentially shown is that when the integral associated with our function has infinite area, then the bars that we've drawn in this picture will have infinite area, which means the value of our series will be infinite, which means that our series will diverge. And this is precisely the result that we were looking for. We were looking for a correspondence between our integral and our series. And in fact, we've just found it. Uh, if our integral diverges, if the area under our function is infinite, so too the value of the series must be infinite. Okay, so uh, what about the flip side of the coin? What about whenever the integral doesn't diverge but converges? Uh, can we subsequently say anything about the series? Uh, and as it turns out, uh, the answer will be yes. And in fact, we'll be able to show that if the integral converges, so too must the series. Uh, so check this out. Uh, we're going to assume now the integral converges, which means what? Uh, what? The limit is uh, some number off the number line. So whenever you look at the area under this function, uh, that's going to be some number off the number line. So this integral here, this amount of area that's boxed in, is just going to be some good old-fashioned number off the number line. What number it is, who knows, but it's some number, whatever it may be. Uh, now, uh, I'd like to uh, point out that the bars drawn in this picture are different from the bars drawn in the previous. Because whereas the bars that we drew last time protruded off to the right, uh, the bars that we're drawing this time are protruding off to the left. Now, similar to previously, uh, when you go up to where the function is at 1, f of 1, that is just going to be a sub 1 off of our series because, well, we grabbed our function to be precisely corresponding to the terms of our series. So uh, f of x is equal to a sub x, so f of 1 would be a sub 1. Well, what I'm going to do here is draw my graph of, of my bar off to the left. I'm going to go one unit to the left. Well, if I go one unit to the left and I'm a1 units tall, this bar has an uh, area of a1. Because uh, what? a1 times 1 is 1. Similarly, go to where the function is at 2, f of 2. Well, f of 2 is equal to a sub 2. So this rectangle has an area of a sub 2 times 1, or just a sub 2. Uh, and then we can continue that trend for a sub 3, a sub 4, and so on. Uh, note, because this function is decreasing, uh, when I draw my bar off to the left, it's necessarily going to be under the function. And that's key here, because you see, 
if I look at the bars uh, in particular, look at the bars A2, A3, A4, and so on. Just look at the bars that are to the right of the, uh, of, of the integral region. Uh, those bars lie under the function. Well, if the area of the function was just some finite number, then the area of the bars has to be something less than that. Uh, well, in particular, something between that number and zero. So this is also just going to be some other finite number. Now, I mean, are they going to be the same finite number? Certainly not. There's some uh, error here, regions that, that aren't uh, encompassed uh, by the bars, that are encompassed by the by the graph, but nonetheless, if the area under this function, if the black region has a finite amount of area, so too the area of the bars A2 and beyond is a finite number. Uh, but now think about this. If the bars A2 and beyond add to a finite number, we can add the bar for A1 in, and that's not going to affect whether or not the sum is still finite. Uh, right, because what, however much area A1 had, it would be whatever it is, add that into a finite number, you're going to get another finite number back. But what does that mean now? What, what That means when you take the bar A1, and you take the bars A2, A3, and so on, and you add up all of their areas, uh, what do you get? You get a finite number. But, well, the bars here have areas equal to exactly the values of the terms of our series. So this means that if we take the sum of the terms of our series in this case, uh, the sum of the terms of our series uh, will be will, will converge. It's going to be some number off the number line. And well, uh, note the convergence of our series corresponded precisely to the, co the convergence of our integral. Uh, so uh, through analyzing these pictures, we can see uh, that when you have a function which is decreasing, positive, and continuous, which is built from the terms of your series, well, the integral associated with your function converges precisely when your series converges, and the integral associated with your series diverges, uh, 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 well, that diverges precisely when your uh, series diverges. So in other words, uh, should you have a function that is decreasing, positive, and continuous, there is a direct correspondence between the integrals convergence or divergence and the corresponding series convergence or divergence. And that is what we call the integral test for series.